best Marvel score ever? Big talk, maybe don't think so yet, but just listen to this. Yeah, sorry, I hear that the Avengers theme would like a word, but I can't hear it over Hulk's epicness. At the same time, we get the beginning of Ang Lee's comic inspiration, splitting the screen, a drop of water to the Big Bang, and the universe contrasted to a single cell. Then the opening credits give us as much of an IRL explanation for Hulk's appearance and most of his powers as his father experiments with different animal genes. Also, a David Banner doing science-y type stuff to accidentally create the Hulk montage is the fastest way to get one of the best young Sam Elliott look-alike sound-alikes ever. Manipulating the immune system is dangerous and stupid. More comic styling, which I really love here, it's the comic book version of a split diopter. Film language would normally dictate simple shot-reverse shot here, allowing you to focus on one person at a time, but when you read a comic, you can often take in the entire picture looking at both people at once or quickly back and forth, and that's what Aang's trying to give us. Even Bruce's green blood likes purple pants! And it's a fun touch that even before the gamma exposure as a kid, Bruce's skin is trying to change to green when he's upset, which would be an effect of the bioluminescence. There's something inside you. It's so special. Some kind of greatness. And someday you're gonna share it with the whole world. New York invasion? Shadowing? Ah, uh, wrong Hulk. Stan Lee is always a win, and OG Hulk Lou Ferrigno is also pretty cool. Also, Stan's line is improvised because of course it is. Good morning, Dr. Francois. Security ought to be beefed up a lot more. Now some creative comic styling in the service of visual storytelling. Sort of bypassing the Kuleshov effect by showing both the object of Bruce's stare and his stare in the same frame, which otherwise need to be separate angles and cuts. Uh, should we? Yeah, why not? Betty. And sometimes the second angle even shows two of the same person. Moral of the story is that Aang got a lot of footage from multiple angles for this film. Apparently General Ross knew Jen when she was solving labyrinths and chilling with Bowie. Sorry, your, your name was Jin? Daniel. Ah, Kim. Put it on his uniform. No doubt the inspiration for Apple's live pictures feature, and obviously another cool comic styling integration. Zen Bruce Banner with his Lycan obsession. Or, or is it Ang Lee's obsession? Either way, it's something pre-gamma, mild-mannered Bruce would enjoy. Three-way eye split screen. Attempted self-sacrifice. Hey, I'm not gonna explode, okay? I mean, it really depends on how you define explode. Apparently you even get the genetic memories of things that are part of your genome now. Even Bruce's betting nose to be purple and green. <laughs> Hulk rat, which fun fact was a small dog in a rat suit. Hi, Dad. Hello, Betty. As far as fathers and daughters go, Sam Elliott and Jennifer Connelly knock it out of the park. I believe every moment of them on screen together. This first transformation. Even if you hated the entire movie, this was still a sight to see in theaters for the first time. Hulk smash. And it's all unsettling like a monster movie. It was like being born, coming up for air, light hitting my face and screaming. Yeah, I'd recognize a tantrum anywhere. He's also kind of built like a giant toddler. My heartbeat. Boom. Boom. Some modulation to make his voice a little lower. Also, he heard this heartbeat when he was first waking up from the gamma exposure. Huh, I love the one second earlier reveal that Ross is coming there to take Bruce with the agent coming through the back door with his hand on his gun. I think you left something in your lab last night. <laughs> he actually did. Hulk butt was too much for that pocket. Not with eyes like yours. He's not wrong. Jennifer does have pretty eyes, but this movie is like a showcase of how not to treat women. Looking good. Man, that's three screen wipes slash scene transitions in under 60 seconds. This edit does not mess around. And I'll kill it before it does any real harm. Would you really destroy part of yourself? If it means destroying you, yeah, probably. But that's kind of the difference between the two of you, isn't it? Ooh, the way the camera is pinned to Bruce's face as it changes. I have to say my memory of fully lit Hulk is much worse. He does not look bad. The detail in his face is on point, and why wouldn't his skin glow green after gamma exposure to his green bioluminescent jellyfish DNA? Another choice that some may hate, I pretty much love it. It plays right into the idea that his emotional trauma has no limit. Huh, his landing a mile away creates a water ripple a la the T-Rex. And I know it wouldn't really work for the MCU that well, but 25 foot tall Hulk is still my favorite. Talk about attention to detail. 
You know how when you're looking at someone, you bounce back and forth between their eyes? If you've never noticed you do that unconsciously, have fun next time you're trying to listen to someone talk and you can't decide which eye to look at and then start wondering if they notice how intently you're focusing on that one eye and then awkwardly you'll stare at the center of their nose so as not to draw attention to your darting eyes. But you know it's too late. You know they know and now it's awkward and you've missed whatever it is they're saying and you can't possibly respond intelligently and welcome to social anxiety. Anyway, Hulk's eyes are so far apart she has to move her head back and forth to look at him when he's this close. And hey, her dream was clairvoyant. Yeah, but can you make a poodle scary looking and then make it whine so we almost feel bad for it? Hulk resourcefulness and Hulk ingenuity. Hulk slap. The dog fight, while not many people's favorite, also does a good job of keeping Hulk's good slash bad allegiance murky and keeps Betty at least somewhat afraid of him. <laughs> See what I mean about this being a bad day for Betty? But the battle between Banner and Hulk here is awesome. His speech simplifying as if he's slipping back under. But then Betty pulls him back out as she always does. She wanted me to change into that mindless Hulk. An unwieldy boat? What a weird word to describe the green guy. We designed him to respond to physical damage. Emotional damage can manifest physically. Serious trauma. A physical wound is finite. But with emotions, what's to say that it won't just go on and on and start a chain reaction. That simple idea is something that makes this Hulk scarier than the rest because there is no perceived limit to his power. I'm going to take you someplace safe. Another comic stylization with the black engulfing him until it's just Bruce's head visible. Now that's a sick screen wipe. An intensely and ridiculously long montage of flying Bruce to the underground base where he was born that lasts over four minutes and is indicative of why this movie is so long is the fastest way to see the sweet underground base that would make Umbrella jealous. Predestined to follow in his father's footsteps. I was gonna say damned. Of course you are. Yo, these two are the best. They sell the idea that they can disagree while agreeing. The father-daughter chemistry is phenomenal. This is still one of my favorite comic book movie moments. What seems like it might be gross at first turns strange and then the slow change to metal and then the squeaking metal against metal as he tries to pull his hand free. It would be the freakiest and coolest experience ever. You see, I can partake with the essences of all things. Honesty? Do you really believe that I am separate from you? I know he rarely does anyway, but Nick Nolte really doesn't even care. So really Scott Pilgrim took a lot of inspiration from this movie and that's a okay. And I still take orders. There's that Thunderbolt we've, well, we haven't been hearing about him, but we've been waiting for him. Sort of a throwaway moment that's actually important to this version of Bruce Banner and Hulk. You see, every single one of Bruce's transformations into the Hulk hasn't been because of physical pain. You might try to make the argument that Talbot's first attack sets him off, but Bruce turns because Talbot isn't letting him go rescue Betty, which isn't physical pain. Even now, Bruce allows himself to be knocked out, and it's not until trauma from his past is stirred up that he turns. I tried to improve on the limits in myself. Myself. Not him. The joke is that Nick Nolte is just playing himself here, but man, does he nail this part. She and the knife merged. Get it? Because he's the merging guy now. Got that whole absorbing man thing going on. I could tell from the moment she conceived that it wasn't the son I had given her. I like that we get the narration of David telling Betty, lining up with Bruce's memory, jumpstarting his rage. The movie alluded to them being more connected than we're shown. But he's working in the same exact goddamn field his father did. So was the idea that the pressurized tank would keep his matter from expanding? Not a terrible idea. Either way, it's not like they'd have any specialized setup to contain him. <laughs> Hulk sneeze. Okay, this seems pretty specialized, but anyone can buy a bunch of those window ceiling insulation cans and make it into guns. I really just wanted to win it because it's a cool idea that mostly works. Now there's a <laughs> tasteful death. <laughs> they like that exit so much they even smash through the screen. Maybe the most controversial part of this film? Still, these jumps are part of the comic and pretty dope. And I've personally always thought the way he bounced off the ground worked as well. I just see it as shock absorption so he doesn't go 30 feet into the dirt. Ooh, that delayed explosion. The scale of everything happening is deafening. Yep. Also, yep, and don't get worked up, they're fine. 
I always thought that the Hulk yell was especially blood curling, but it wasn't until this time that I realized it's because not every part of Hulk is impervious to damage. Another guy who thinks he's Captain America. Oh, the way he moves the shield in place at the last second. This little bit of personality with Hulk hitting the cannon into his palm. It's now that I think the fun fact that Ang Lee did the motion capture for Hulk is appropriate to bring up. Does this count as flying? Can, can Hulk fly? I don't even care, man. This is where the film just takes it to a new level. We're still getting Lee's artistic interpretation of Hulk, peaceful Hulk floating through the air, fully embracing this side of himself. But we're about to get some of the best Hulk action put on screen. Ha, he jumped from panel to panel. This could be a hint that Bruce's consciousness is still in there, or this version of Hulk still retains a lot of Bruce. The boy likes watching like and grow and contemplating life. It would make sense given how powerful Betty's presence is on him. He was shrouded in darkness in his first few scenes, but they put him on full display in all his glory here. He runs, he jumps, he smashes, he's indestructible, and it's freaking awesome. <laughs> Swatting missiles away in his loop-de-loop -loop run. Keyboard, your parking lot is ready. Ah, nicknames for old Fundy. Love the escalation we've been through. You got soldiers with foam, tanks with some big shells, aerial attacks from somewhere, choppers with missiles and guns, and now we're onto fighter jets. <laughs> hey, saving the Golden Gate Bridge. Also a pilot. Looks like he hasn't solved that icing problem. Just the way he starts falling in the reflection of the pilot's face shield. Getting to see them in frame together. One finger equals one hand. <laughs> Puny human. I guess he finally showed the world how special he is. Some kind of greatness, I'm sure. And someday you're gonna share it with the whole world. I love how he's almost shrinking to meet her eye line as she descends the stairs. It's like all his cells are filled up with water and they're letting it go now. Meaning the Hulk is basically just bloat. Like if you eat too much fried food. You weren't that hard to find. Yes, I was. Aw, cause she's talking about the and he meant and nah. What a moment from two actors who haven't been on screen together, only their younger versions. But man, do I believe they hate each other. I didn't come here to see you. I came here to see my son, my real son. I know a lot of people don't love the second finale we get here, but this moment between these two is special. A dark idea to have the father finally reveal his true desires, that he doesn't care for Bruce at all, and it was always about his selfish desires and getting his power back. Think of all the harm they've done! To you! To me! They're on a stage, so it makes sense for Nolte to act like it. Yeah. Seriously, what are we doing here if we aren't singing Nolte's praises? I mean, he... He literally chose the scenery! And can we talk about character design? Can we talk about how this quick look at flaming electric David Banner pseudo-absorbing man is as good or better than just about anything else in this film? And then the coolest fight in the clouds ever. This is genuinely one of the reasons I love this film. Each freeze frame more conceptual than literal as Bruce battles his past traumas scored with a piece of music that sticks with me. Take it! Take it all! And this is the culmination of that emotional trauma we were talking about before. Bruce finally lets go, lets his rage for his father out, everything he's repressed. Parental abuse and trauma is symbolized here fantastically. Once Bruce unleashes it, it's beyond what David can handle because, as abusers do, he has no clue what he really did to his son. It's not, it's not stopping. Even Betty confirmed it. But with emotions, what's to say that it won't just go on and on? Yeah, that'll probably kill two creatures created by gamma radiation. Although, when you think about it, Bruce just gave up a bunch of energy and then fell into the water, meaning he'd have the capacity to absorb more gamma radiation, but David was already overloaded. And Ross is torn. He never wanted to have to kill Bruce, but in the end, even Betty understood what needed to be done. Just want everyone to know it's still a comic book out here in Sam Elliott's depression isolation desert. Does anyone do pained holding back tears face like Jennifer Connelly? I submit that they do not. Jennifer Connelly is always a win. <laughs> the iconic line in Spanish, complete with some green eyes. Oh, Slash and Scott Weiland wrote a song for this movie. Is that a thing people knew? I did not know that. I guess Chad Kroger gave us one in Spider-Man and then Dashboard in the sequel. It all adds up. I probably have the same complaint everybody does about this movie. It's a little long and spends too much time on some stuff, but not enough time on other stuff. 
As much as I enjoy it, the entire 11 minute prologue could be cut. The majority of the information is better served later in Bruce's dreams anyway. A good test for me on whether I enjoy a movie is if I'd leave it on when it comes on TV. And I do, but the fact that you can have this movie on in the background and probably not miss much is also worth noting. But I have very fond memories of the scenes I love, the fantastic score, and I think I've made it clear how teenagely felt about Jennifer Connelly and subconsciously I'll always love anything she's in. The big mystery is that David killed Bruce's mom, which seems pretty obvious, so either cut the prologue or just come out with it. Otherwise, the final conflict is a little underwhelming visually, partially because it's so short, but also because it's so dark. However, I think that being a problem is part of the main issue with this movie, that it's only sort of a comic book movie, only sort of a Hulk movie. Hulk, and Bruce for that matter, are kind of passengers in their own movie. David Banner's motivations are a little clearer than Bruce's. Stuff just sort of keeps happening to Bruce. It's a fine origin for the character, and it's clear the sequel was meant to give him more agency. Although I will say that they do unconventionally explore Bruce's trauma. Like I alluded to, the Hulk is the manifestation of all his pent-up rage. He's like that. He's just so bottled up. It's a smart way to sell the Hulk's unlimited power. Every time Bruce turns into the Hulk, it's due to those repressed memories and trauma, the hatred he had for his father that just became part of him whether he remembered it or not. And when you look at the entire movie as one big metaphor for carrying around the weight of past emotional trauma, it all hits a little differently. I think Hulk has some problems that time wouldn't fix, but as a subversion to the current state of comic book movies, I think it would have been received better. In 2003, the superhero genre was still finding its footing with X-Men and Spider-Man. This film breaks the mold and would be a refreshing look at comic books from a different perspective. I'm not calling it Logan, I'm saying I like what Ang Lee chose to do with the character drama, artistic visuals, and brooding score. And even if Ang Lee didn't trim the fat everywhere he could have, the dialogue is compelling. The relationships between Bruce, David, Betty, and Ross are all fantastic, in no small part due to those four actors. Ang Lee kept the demeanor on set very somber, even when Jennifer had to act opposite a cardboard cutout. People weren't allowed to laugh. That comes through for sure, and it adds to the tone. Many people would argue it's not the right tonal choice for the green guy, but it works in this film. But that's balanced out with some top-notch action scenes involving Hulk. I know we all joke about how bad the CGI is, and don't get me wrong, it has its moments. But by and large, it's not the dumpster fire meme we've manufactured. I think the main problem is the hue of his skin, creating a severe, uncanny valley, and it also makes lighting fail for our eyes because no mammal has skin that color. If you drop the saturation, I think it's a little more realistic, but I don't think you need these levels of detail to sell Hulk. I'll always have fond memories for the Gamma Glow Hulk. As I said, I'll always watch it if it comes on TV, and I still stand by enjoying it more than The Incredible Hulk from 2008. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be getting another sequel with Banna. Also, William Hart is terrific, but... Come on, Sam Elliott is Thunderbolt Ross? Maybe he's too rough for the MCU, I, I don't know. 